This channel is known for exuberant space cruisers and other gigantic builds in Kerbal Space Program. Problem is, in reality none of these monster ships weighing hundreds of tons would be possible. Or are they? Hello everybody and welcome! My usual method of getting a large space cruiser into orbit in KSP is to strap ridiculous amounts of tanks and engines onto them and fly them into space that way. Real-life space applications, however, have two constraints that would prohibit that. The payload capacity of available heavy lift vehicles and aerodynamics. Also probably cost. I don't want to imagine how many billions of dollars a space cruiser the dimensions of my cosmic giant would cost. Link is in the description, by the way. But is there a way to work around these constraints? Could I design a cool looking space cruiser and then split it up in sensible modular chunks that would fit on a somewhat realistic carrier vehicle? If you are a long time viewer of this channel, I did something in that vein with my Gargantua series where I built a huge space cruiser in space. But to be honest, all launch vehicles were custom made for each part. And this time, I wanted to have something standardized. So which design to go with? With SLS on the way and its roughly 100 tons of payload capacity to low Earth orbit, there's a possibility to get some really heavy stuff up there. However, we have no information on realistic fairing sizes yet. SpaceX's Starship will also be able to transport heavy payloads, but I'm not sure their cargo compartment idea would be applicable to what I have planned. So in the end, I landed on Vulcan Center, ULA's upcoming heavy lift vehicle. It is capable of sending roughly 27 tons into low Earth orbit, which is significantly less than SLS or Starship, but it will offer a huge cargo volume with fairings up to 21 meters tall and 5.4 meters wide. Yes, New Glenn would offer an even wider fairing at 7 meters in diameter, but I wanted a somewhat two-scale representation in Kerbal Space Program, and since 5 meter parts are the widest available in the stock game and I didn't want to fiddle around with fairings to simulate a 7 meter diameter booster, I stuck with ULA's design. To be honest, my design here is way more capable than the real thing, at least in Kerbal Space Program. I could send more than 150 tons into orbit with this here if I wanted to. But the parts I needed for my cruiser that I came up with were a lot lighter. Even hitting the 27 tons payload mass that Vulcan Center will be able to lift into orbit when I defueled the parts. My Vulcan Center is roughly a replica of the VC4L variant. V standing for Vulcan Booster, with a K in good old Kerbal tradition, C for center upper stage, 4 for the amount of solid rocket boosters and L standing for the large payload fairing. All parts used are stock KSP plus the DLC parts. The painted hull is made up of custom flags I made myself. ULA wants to reuse the engine section of the rocket, something they call smart reusability. That's why I designed that part to come off of the booster as well. Like ULA at the moment, I do not bother with recovering it as of yet. You're going to see quite a few of these launches here since I had to chop my cruiser design into 10 parts to make it fit into the payload fairing, which is actually to scale 5 meters by 21 meters. The first section, now in orbit, is the crew module, containing the command section and crew habitat. No, I did not bother with a rotating segment to simulate gravity. Kerbals can deal with zero gravity much better than us puny humans. The next launch contains not just the aft section, but also an auxiliary craft that I used to stitch together everything. Since I did not want to add additional docking parts to keep the lines of the finished vehicle as smooth as possible, this was a bit of a hassle since I had to use the grabbing claw and had designed the arms with the RCS modules very narrow compared to the hull. This led to some undesirable situations, like taking ages to find the correct approach angle and bumping into the modules. 
After that was done, I brought up the science section, which also contains the large communications antenna. Can't have an interplanetary cruiser without either, can we? Then there was another piece to fit in the rear, which may not make a lot of sense at the moment, but it will soon enough. I mentioned that I split the cruiser into 10 pieces, but I did not have to perform 10 Vulcan launches. That's because two segments were small enough to fit into a single payload fairing. These were tricky to move since I had designed the auxiliary craft to fit around 3.75 meter parts, but I hadn't taken the radiators on these parts into account. In the end I managed to grab onto the smaller part of these segments and get them onto the main fuselage. You can probably already guess in which design direction I'm going to take this. Yes, next up are the parts for the engine nacelles. And they are so large that I need to perform two launches for each, port and starboard. It's actually a bit funny to see engines poking the wrong direction, but luckily they weren't active during my maneuvers. Once the first engine section was finally mounted to the cruiser, things started to take some shape. Anyway, let's repeat that process. And then do two more times for the front pieces of the nacelles. The thinking here was that since I used nuclear engines, I wanted to have them as far away from the crew as possible. Yeah, I know that KSP does not simulate radiation hazards, but we're trying to keep it at least somewhat realistic here. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> Remember when I complained about the auxiliary grabber craft being tedious to maneuver? When attaching the final piece, it attached smooth as butter. Almost no headache here. And yeah, all of the upper stages of the lift vehicle were deorbited to burn up in the atmosphere. Or crash into the ocean, whatever killed them first. Now back to that aft segment I didn't go into much detail earlier. It will be the parking spot for this cute little thing. A space plane that is capable of reaching orbit in one go, so it's a single stage to orbit vehicle or SSTO. Since it can do this for Kerbin, it can also do it on lathe. You have to tweak the amount of fuel inside though and lose some of the oxidizer. For all other bodies, and there are quite a few you can use this for, more on that later, you should completely refill it. Once our powerful dual rapier engines have carried us into orbit, it was just a question of doing an efficient rendezvous with the modular cruiser. Much more efficient than what I did with the Vulcan Center vehicles, since those had loads of fuel to spare and I could go for a quick as possible approach compared to this. Once we have met up with the cruiser, it is time to dock and voila! Here's a science fiction style gigantic space cruiser with more than 8000 meters per second of delta V and a universally usable lander craft. And everything can be put into orbit with a sensible launch vehicle. Some might say a boring one. No, not really. I think the Vulcan Center will be exciting when it launches, but yeah, compared to other stuff that is out there, it's a bit, well, not as exciting as others. But before I leave you to play around with the idea and my Vulcan Center I've uploaded, see links in the description, I want to show you what I meant with universally usable lander craft. See, this may look like a regular space plane, but it has a trick up its sleeve and to perform it we need a planetary body without an atmosphere. So let's take this show on the road, or rather, to the moon. Once our cruiser has brought us into a low orbit, we can start with the descent maneuver. At first I try to cancel out all the horizontal velocity, then the aforementioned trick comes into play. Ta-da! We can rotate our entire engine assembly. This enables us to land the plane vertically, provided the terrain is flat enough. Here, well, <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> but since nothing broke, we can use the landing gear to get us in a more comfortable position and then do what all Kerbals were born to do. Perform science and plant a flag. Since the terrain has a bit of a slope, I can use that to launch into the ascent back to our main cruiser. And yeah, that's basically it. This is how to build a huge cruiser with sensible rockets and still have good capabilities in that vehicle. Maybe someday some crazy space company will build such a thing. One can only hope. 
If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.